If you'd like a single effort to produce cash pay patients and referral sources for years to come, then listen up because I'm about to share with you the marketing strategy that I used back when I started my practice in 2010. It was a huge part of filling my schedule in less than six months and it still produces patients to this day. Welcome to today's episode. My name is Jared Carter. I'm a physical therapist, a cash-based practice owner, and the creator of the Cash Pay Profit Formula. I help healthcare providers like you to create your own cash-based concierge or out-of-network practices so you can end reliance on greedy insurance companies, provide a level of care you are ultimately proud of, and reclaim control of your profits and your future. Now, the strategy that I just mentioned that I'm going to share with you today are presentations or workshops, one in the same. And I not only use them in the beginning of my practice to really fill my schedule quickly, but when the pandemic set in, I used them again, but online in the form of webinars. And it was a huge part of why 2020 was just as profitable for us as 2019 was. Now, when done right, whether online or offline, presentations or workshops can be huge for your practice. They can be simple and fast to deploy, and they can bring in a ton of patients. But when done wrong, they can be an enormous waste of time and energy. So today, I'm going to share with you four vital keys to make sure that your presentations and workshops pay off big for your practice. And as usual with these episodes, I have a free resource for you that's going to do a lot of it for you and make it even faster to implement these strategies. It's my step-by-step presentation and workshop outline that converts attendees into cash pay patients. And this resource not only gives you that outline, but it also gives you my speaking notes and a lot of the stuff from the slides of one of my recent presentations that brought in thousands of dollars in new patients to my practice. You can download that free resource at drjaredcarter.com forward slash episode 20. Okay, let's dive in. Key number one, lead generation. Now, Plenty of people doing presentations and workshops do have some form of lead generation involved, but a lot of them don't. Whoever shows up, you don't necessarily collect their information ahead of time or during the presentation. And that's a huge problem because no matter how good you are, you're not going to convert 100% of attendees into saying yes to your offer in that presentation. However, If you collect their information, either before or during or after, and you can follow up, your conversion rate from that event and from those efforts is going to massively increase over time. And one pro tip, and this is really a little known way to go about this. Of course, if you're doing a webinar, they have to give you like a first name and an email at least to to sign up. But if it's an in-person presentation or workshop, instead of having a clipboard with a piece of paper where they can sign up for something or leave their information, put a postcard and a pen in each seat with fields for them to fill in their information. Maybe it's a question or two they can fill out because when it's sitting there in their seat with something to write on, it's almost like it's just, hey, if I'm here, I'm expected to do this. And you'll get sometimes up to 100% of people will actually fill those cards out versus you know, hey, you know, directing them to sign up at the clipboard on their way out, which very few actually do. Key number two has to do with the presentation or workshop itself and how you structure it. Because most clinicians, whether it's you or their staff, you know, they get up there and they do the clinical thing, right? And they get into it and they geek out on all that stuff that we love to talk about. But our audience is not really going to geek out on that necessarily in the same way we do. They're not going to engage with it and they're going to be less likely to act. So the key here is to use a patient or client story woven into the presentation or workshop, usually more towards the beginning of the presentation. And that's going to do a few things. Number one, it's going to help with engagement and just attention. You know, again, people are going to zone out, but we are a storytelling species. Anytime you can involve story in the messaging that you're using, whether it's a workshop or presentation or blog post or whatever, you're just going to have better attention and engagement and likelihood to act on the offer that you you have in the presentation. The second thing it does is it flags your ideal prospect. And what I mean by that is you're telling a story about a patient that they can relate to because it's really, you're like telling them a story about themselves. They have similar characteristics, their backstory with their pain or whatever you're talking about might be similar. So they relate to this person in the story and it kind of flags them to realizing, wow, this person talking to me has worked with someone just like me. And it paints this picture of a transformation you took that person through. And it's a picture of transformation or it's a transformation that that person in the audience 
is desiring. So this really, really powerful way to get them to relate to the person you're talking about, know that you can help and know that you can get them to this thing that they are currently desiring. And the third thing it does, and this is huge, is that you can pre-address objections. And what I mean by that is you're going to create a list of the things that people might have as an objection to your offer, whether it's just a free consultation or it's a, a big long workshop that's thousand dollars, or maybe it's to actually come in for treatment or whatever the case may be, whatever you're offering, you have to think about the, the reasons that someone in the audience might say no, or might say, oh, well, I have to you know, I have to talk to my spouse or, you know, I can't break away from work that frequently or that clinic is too far from me or I want to use my insurance or that's too expensive or, you know, there's all these different reasons that someone might say no. Right. Or maybe I, I, I you know, I'm going to figure it out on my own with YouTube videos. And that's actually in the resource that you can download associated with this episode. That's one of the things that I address because there's a lot of people out there that you know, they're, they're, they'll search and Google and get on YouTube and see if they can do it themselves. And, and part of the story that I present in that resource is of a patient that actually started out and went, ended up having a terrible saga of back pain, but they started out by trying a few exercises that they saw on YouTube and it wasn't enough for obvious reasons, right? So any of those pain points or objections that would keep them from moving forward and saying yes, you can pre-object them, uh, sorry, pre-address them by inserting them into your story and let him know that this person, the story is about, you know, that they faltered because of that, or they overcame that reason for not moving forward. And they were so happy that they did because this was the result. Again, it'll become more clear exactly how you can do that and examples of that in the resource. So if you go to drjaredcarter.com forward slash episode 20, download that and you'll see exactly what I mean. Okay, number three for the vital things that you have to make sure that you include in your presentations and workshops, a call to action or an offer of some sort. And I know that sounds self-evident, but I've actually had plenty of students that I've taught about this or that have said, yeah, I did a workshop the other weekend. And, and I said, well, what was your offer? What was your call to action? And they, they were like, oh, I didn't really have one. I just do the brand awareness thing. I wanted to get up there and, you know, show my face and present my, my clinic and, and be a presence in the community. And those are all great things. But if you're up in front of a group of people or online in front of a group of people and you have their attention, you got to have a call to action. You got to have something to offer because if you don't, then you're never, you're going to get a hundred percent no's <laughs> to what you could have, you know, what you could have had them say yes to. So what you offer the call to action is not what I'm going to talk about today. It's a little bit out and there's a lot of factors that go into that. But what I'm saying here is that you just got to make sure that you have an offer and then additional pro tips on this third step is that it needs to have scarcity and urgency involved. So let's say um, my offer is just a free consultation with one of my physical therapists. If you're dealing with any kind of pain right now or injury, I might say, but because they're free, we can only do a limited number of them and we need to have them booked before this event is over, before we leave. So, you know, make sure you, you see me or, you know, any of the other staff here. We have the capability to book those for the first five people can get those for free. We do need to book them before we, we head out today. So there's a scarcity of number and there's an urgency in time. Uh, to get signed up. When you don't have scarcity and urgency, it makes a huge difference. I've done a lot of these types of presentations. And when we added in that factor, conversions and signups skyrocketed. And key number four is to record your presentations and workshops. Again, may sound self-evident, but a lot of people don't do it. If you want to get if you want to get results for years out of these single one-time efforts, record them, put them on YouTube, put them on your website, put them on social transcribe them, get some, some SEO out of, out of it. I mean, there's so many things you can do when you record it and it's going to be out there working for you for years. So don't make the mistake of not recording these efforts and not getting them to attract patients for years to come. So there you have it. The four keys to making sure your presentations and workshops pay off huge and pay off for years for your practice. Highly recommend you go get that free resource, that outline of exactly how to create a high converting presentation or workshop, you can get it at drjaredcarter.com forward slash episode 20. I love your comments. I love your questions. Leave those in the comments below if you have any. And until next time, please enjoy these related videos.